Hello and welcome to Anton Math. Now in the last video we introduced the law of cosines and in this video we're going to see some application problem uh, dealing with the law of cosines. But first I need to talk a little bit about navigation and bearing. Now oftentimes in navigation we use what's called a bearing. And what a bearing does is it either starts with north and south and then gives a degree change in the direction east or west. This gives the total direction or bearing of travel. So let's look at a couple of examples so we get comfortable with this. If I look at something like north 30 degrees east, and this is the standard, um, this is kind of the conventional notation, It'll always be north or south first, some degree between 0 and 90, and then east or west. So what north 30 degrees east means is I'm starting from north, and then I'm traveling 30 degrees from north to east. Because I'm traveling in this direction here, where this angle is 30 degrees. Okay, similarly, north 50 degrees west would be starting from north and then going in the direction, it's a squiggly line, it's a windy day, going in the direction 50 degrees west. Now we can also start from south, south 60 degrees west would be if I'm pointing south and then going 60 degrees towards west. So in other words, there's I'm going in this direction where the arrow is, but there's a 60 degree angle between south and the direction I'm going towards the west. And, I don't know, something like south 20 degrees east would be starting from south and then moving 20 degrees towards the east, and that's the direction that I'm going. Okay, so this is just a, a kind of a way for us to talk about navigation and bearing, and these will present themselves in word problems or real world applications. Uh, but let's see an example of where we might use something like this. So a pilot sets out from an airport and heads in the direction north 20 degrees east, flying at 200 miles per hour. After one hour, he makes a course correction and heads in the direction north 40 degrees east. Half an hour after that, engine trouble forces him to make an emergency landing. So first, we want to find the distance between the airport and his final landing point. And second, we want to find the bearing from the airport to his final landing point. So let's go ahead and draw a picture, take a look at what this looks like. I'm going to draw the picture over here. So let's say this is my initial starting point. My initial starting point is right here. This is my airport. We're, we're, let's just go ahead and put the airport at the origin. Now really, we're just creating a plane here. So it doesn't matter where we put it. We choose the origin because that's the easiest place to put it, right? So this is my north up here. Okay. Now we start out flying at north 20 degrees east. So that's going to look something like this. We're flying north 20 degrees east. So this angle right here is 20 degrees. Now we travel for one hour. He's going 200 miles an hour. He travels for one hour. So this length is 200, 200 miles, isn't it? We've traveled 200 total miles. Now after that, he makes a course correction. So at this point, he makes a course correction. We're just going to go ahead and draw a little dotted navigation axis here. He's now traveling north 40 degrees east. So that looks a little bit more like this, doesn't it? Okay. So that 40 degrees, this is my north, that 40 degrees goes right here. All right. Now he travels for a half an hour. So that means that the length of this line is 100 miles. And you can see we're constructing our triangle here. Now we're almost done. We need this third side because the questions all deal with from where we started to where we ended. So we have two pieces of information that we need. I need to find what this angle is, and I need to find what this distance is. So let's call this distance x. Let's call this angle theta. Okay, so A is asking for x, B is asking for 20 plus theta. So we'll, we'll get to B here in a second. Um, but we can get a little bit more information from this triangle first. 
and that piece of information I want is this angle here. Now notice I was going at north 20 degrees east. So let's just say I kept going at north 20 degrees east, it would look a little something like this. Now the difference between this straight line, see this straight line here, um, and the angle that we have is going to be 20 degrees, isn't it? I was at 20 degrees, now I've shifted an additional 20 degrees at this point we changed direction. So in other words what I'm saying is, now looking at this straight line, I can find this angle here by looking at 180 minus 20. So it's going to be 160 degrees. Right? So just to look at that again, if we look at this straight line, we know that the total angle on the straight line is 180 degrees, and the difference between the beginning of this line and where we turned is 20 degrees. So in other words, this angle here is 20 degrees, which means that this angle here is 160 degrees to finish out that angle of the straight line. Okay, so now we have enough information to proceed. I need to find x. So using my law of cosines for part a, I know that x squared, or I'm going to make a little sandwich with x and the angle opposite of x, x squared is going to be the other two sides squared, so 100 squared plus 200 squared minus 2 times the other two sides, so 2 times 100 times 200 cosine of the angle opposite x, which we found to be 160 degrees. Now I'm not going to try to simplify this, these numbers are going to explode pretty fast here, but if we plug this into our calculator we're going to get that x squared is about equal to 87,587.70 miles squared, but let's just wait a second for that label. So we can take the square root of both sides, we get that x is about equal to 295.95 miles. Okay, now of course we can just take the positive square root, I don't need to worry about plus and minus because we're talking about total distance. So the distance from the airport here to my final destination here is a total of 295.95 miles. Okay, good, that's part A. Now for part B, I want to know the total bearing from the airport where we started to the point where the plane landed. Now that bearing is going to be 20 degrees plus theta, or, not, or I should say north 20 degrees plus theta east, isn't it? We already have this 20 degrees, so if I can find the theta on the inside of the triangle, that's going to give me this total angle from north to the bearing directly from the airport to our landing point. So what I need to do here is I need to solve for theta. So now here we can use law of cosines again, and we can have um, this 100 squared equals 200 squared plus 295.95 squared, yada, 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 ending with cosine of theta. But instead, I'm just going to use the law of sines. Because I introduced this side x, I have enough information now to use the law of sines. Right? Notice that sine of theta. Now theta is opposite the side with length 100. So this is going to be equal to sine of 160 degrees over 295.95 well then sine of theta is equal to 100 sine of 160 degrees over 295.95 which when we plug into our calculator uh, gives us about 0. 11557 and that's going to give us that theta is equal to sine inverse 
of 0.11557, which is about equal to 6.636 degrees. So our final answer is the bearing from the airport to the final landing point was north 26.636 degrees east right not 6.636 because remember we already had a 20 degree bearing and we're adding to that 6.636 so we take this we're going to plug in what we found for theta and this is our final answer for the bearing okay so this is our final answer for part b and this was our final answer for part a okay now this is just kind of a standard navigation and bearing problem so familiarize yourself with this and a lot of the homework problems will be something similar to this usually dealing with airplanes and boats. Now next video we're going to finish up this section uh, introducing what's called Heron's formula for the area of the triangle. So we'll see you there.